During the past year, the American Society for Cybernetics, New Macy's Group, have been playing with language, playing with metaphors, cybernetic metaphors related to the ideas or concepts of flowing, floating, and swimming. This video is about that play. You want to go back to cybernetics? Yes, this afternoon is cybernetics. Well, you see, I've used uh, a metaphor for cybernetics, and that is how a river makes its bed. How does a river make its bed? There's, not, there's no causal relation involved in that whatsoever. It's that the water increases because of rain or whatever, and it looks for a way out. And eventually it hits all sorts of obstacles and eventually it finds a place where it can go out. The river knows nothing about the structure or the contents of the environment. But it knows where it can go. It learns where it can go. And where it can go is constrained by the fact that water can't rise above itself. Water always has its own level. So it can only go where there's an opening. So it's constrained by the obstacles of the landscape and by its own incapacity of jumping over rocks, you know? That's... Uh, so it's an internal as well as a relational dynamic or relationship. Yes. My take on this is essentially how human beings experience their life and relations. There is only repetition when there are descriptions being given of these things, not when the things themselves are actually existing. The earth keeps turning, and you have to sit somewhere. <laughs> From flowing to floating. And then when are you going to do it? Well, uh, it comes in nicely here, actually. You asked earlier about the relevance of this, and Lou answered with, it's continuous. I was reading an introduction uh, to a book of Gertrude Stein essays, in which there was a little comment about the work of James, not, not the author, but the philosopher James... William. William James. Yeah. There's a quotation about consciousness is continuous. And there was a, a, a small paragraph about the turn of the century when everybody was interested in consciousness. And in comes Freud, and everybody suddenly becomes interested in subconsciousness. Why? Because we can translate. We, we're in a universe in which the subconscious is something that we can discover, interpret, translate. But the, the continuous, the going on of the conscious, is not translatable. And therefore, all the scientific descriptive mechanism does not work for it. And that is, I think, the position we're always in in regard to language. That we're in language all the time. And the notion of description was coming along, telling me that what I... And everybody here finds we're doing all the time is not allowed or is not allowed as quotes description. So every time there is something we can talk about, all the attention goes there. And we cannot, because we're in it all the time, it is very difficult to reflect on what I am talking about doing it now. predicament of self-reference is that I am continuously reflecting on what I'm doing, whether I make it explicit or not. All these levels, allegedly regressive levels, are not regressive because where I actually am is where I actually am. I am in the present. I was in the future. I shall be in the past. 
flowing, floating, swimming. It's not a question of what things are. It is a question of how I learn. It is a question of when I can say something. And as we become confident of that, we, we stop being these outside observers, we, we stop being these controllers, and we start swimming in something which floats, floats, <laughs> floats, like 